Hello, I'm Tony Marino, President and CEO of Tenaz Energy. Thank you for joining us for our Q4 and year-end 2022 results and reserve update. Before we get started, we ask that you please note our advisories on forward-looking statements. First of all, production was up substantially in Q4 versus Q3 and the year earlier period. This was driven really by the drilling program that we conducted on our Leduc Woodbend assets, and I'll come back to that later on, and with a very small contribution from closing our Netherlands acquisition prior to the end of the year. Operating net back was up substantially as well, and uh, this was primarily dri driven by an improvement in prices and lower royalties quarter over quarter. Funds from operations was up substantially, driven by the production increase and the higher net back. Net income was down a little bit year over year, about $3 million year over year. This was really driven by non-cash uh, impairment reversals that occurred last year, exceeding those that we took earlier this year. Net income was up, actually up slightly in Q4 as compared to Q322. In our development project at Leduc Woodband, during the quarter, we drilled, completed, and tied in two additional REX wells, bringing our total number of wells drilled, completed, and tied in uh, to four for 2022 as a whole. We made substantial improvements, we believe, in the way that we're drilling these wells. It starts with an improved geologic and reservoir description that allows us to put the well bore within the net pay zone over a greater distance, uh, allowing us to drill longer wells, which we believe are more capital efficient. In addition to that, we changed our frack designs, which gave us a, a higher percentage of frack placement. We're essentially up to about 100% frack placement of what we uh, intend to do in the last few wells that we drilled. Overall, this gives us better long-term production rates and better capital efficiency, and that's one of the drivers of the reserve results that I'm going to talk about later on. Uh, on the uh, financial side, we continued our uh, stock buyback or NCIB program. Uh, we've now retired about 700,000 shares since we began that program in the summer uh, at an average price of $1.88 per share. Our balance sheet, in our view, remains very strong. Uh, we had $14 million of net working capital at the end of the year. That is up slightly from Q3, despite making the Netherlands acquisition and doing this drilling uh, in uh, Leduc Woodband. So a set of financial results and production results that we're quite happy with for Q4. Next, let's move to our update on a reserve position as evaluated by McDaniel and Associates. We put out what we feel is a strong set of reserve numbers with overall 2P reserves up 20% year over year. This was driven by a substantial increase in reserves in our organic Leduc Woodbend project and the contribution of the Netherlands acquisition that we closed before the end of the year. Overall, this means that we replaced over 600% of production at the proved plus probable level. We had a substantial increase in estimated after-tax net present value discounted at 10%, uh, nearly a doubling for the corporation as a whole. Uh, that reflected improvement in Leduc Woodbend and also uh, the addition of the Netherlands reserves. This improvement in NPV is driven by a higher price deck uh, based on the uh, average of the three engineering consultants uh, uh, price forecast that we use in our reserves and the additional volumes and improved capital efficiencies uh, as a result of our program and in the positive contribution from the Netherlands assets. This results in quite a strong uh, recycle ratio. This is the amount of operating profit that we generate per dollar invested uh, at the 2P level, including changes in future development capital. Uh, we recorded a recycle ratio of about 4.4 times. $4.4 of estimated operating profit for each dollar invested. And at the bottom of the slide in the table, and as reflected in our press release uh, and year-end documents, we show the detail of our uh, uh, reserve statistics 
uh, for each of the reserve, reserve categories, starting with PDP, and then at the total proved and the total proved plus probable levels. So our 2023 outlook. At Leduc Wood Bend, we're going to continue our development program. As we did in 2022, we'll drill four gross. For this year, it will be 3.35 net wells. Uh, that activity will occur after breakup, with the drilling uh, beginning in the summer, and we would expect to have those wells tied in in the second half of the year. In addition to the drilling in Leduc Wood Bend, we'll make some minor facility optimizations that should allow us to produce at higher rates in the future as we continue the development drilling in future years. Uh, with continued production growth in the field, we should be able to achieve economies of scale that will allow us to reduce the unit costs. In our non-operated Netherlands asset, the operator intends to conduct some workover and optimization activities on the existing well base that should allow us to continue the current production profile. There is some potential that additional drilling activity could occur on the Netherlands licenses later in 2023. Uh, if that activity occurs, we'll adjust our budget at that time. And finally, uh, as co of course, we'll continue the disciplined m &A efforts that are the main part of our strategy to attempt to add additional uh, assets and value for our shareholder base in our primary identified regions of focus uh, Europe and MENA, but also with the potential to uh, make transactions in the Americas. On the lower left, we show a production mix that we expect for 2023, assuming there are no further acquisitions. Uh, that would be 44% uh, liquids production, oil and liquids, uh, about one quarter North American gas, and about one third contribution from the existing asset set in uh, high value and high margin European gas shown here uh, with the TTF uh, marker. On the lower uh, right, we show our combined guidance for Canada and the existing Netherlands asset, uh, production guidance of 2200 to 2300 BOED. That's composed about two thirds of Canadian production and one third from the Netherlands asset. Combined EMD CapEx, would be 20 to 24 million as we've currently identified the program uh, with the identified drilling activity, as I mentioned before, or gross 3.35 net wells in Canada. Let's put that 2023 outlook in the context of Tanaz growth history. We effected our recapitalization of Altura Energy in 2021. We announced the recap in Q3 21, closed in the early part of Q4. Production has more than doubled since the time of the recap as projected for 2023. We've had an increase in reserves as shown on the upper right panel in this slide. And looking at the lower left, uh, even through the 2022 results, we've had a substantial increase in FFO or funds flow from operations. Using our forecast for production for 2023 in the current commodity strip, we'd have an even greater increase in FFO during 2023, and that includes the impact of the Netherlands acquisition for a full year. So we have had good growth in this co company in production, reserves, and FFO. I'll point you to the capitalization table we have on the lower right. Currently, Tanaz has a market value of equity of about $60 million Canadian. After deducting off the $14 million of positive networking capital, at year end, uh, we would have a EV of approximately $45 million Canadian. And we do show on this slide as well the insider ownership, meaning the management board of directors, showing substantial alignment with the shareholders of the company. So now let me summarize the Tanaz model. We're a public company traded on the TSX, symbol TMZ. The primary focus of the company is to make international acquisitions, primarily in the Europe and MENA regions, although we have optionality for the Americas as well, and to take those assets and uh, improve their performance over time through our operating capabilities. 
We have an existing desirable Canadian oil growth project. It is now paired with European natural gas production through the Netherlands acquisition that we made. Uh, and we would seek to uh, grow the Canadian asset and do additional acquisitions in the future. From a balance sheet perspective, the company is debt free uh, with positive networking capital and uh, projected free cash flow from the existing asset base uh, to give us the uh, wherewithal along with what we believe is demonstrated access to the capital markets to make uh, additional acquisitions in the future. We believe that our management has a record of value creation running this model of M&A followed by operational improvement and we intend over the long term to translate that into a growth and income model for our shareholders. So thank you for your attention today. We look forward to the next time that we chat at the time that we will release our Q1 2023 results expected in May of this year. Again, thank you from Tanaz Energy.